So, thank you very much all for coming. Sorry for the delay. It was out of the plan. Just uh, the reception, as you know, it's it opens at 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I was here at 8 30 just to get ready for this because you usually last 30 minutes just to do everything. But it's, uh, it was closed. So, that's why we are in a sort of delay. I was worried because we were on the paper. We are two presenters. But uh, I don't see much as four and five at the moment. So probably the, the other ones are going to come sometime uh, during the morning. Anyhow, uh, I think we should start. Uh, let's uh, have a quick look of uh, the authors and also the other. And we can decide that we can just go in the first place. And then just uh, let the other people just to, to come to the, to the track. <coughs> so this is the uh, the track end of uh, teacher education for the ICT integration in the classroom. So uh, it's been working for the last three uh, two two editions plus this one. So this is three team conference with the conferences with the track team. And I have to say that it's in, it's growing. So uh, I had uh, I remember 15 submissions to the to this track. Finally, 11 got in, and uh, we have only 10 people just uh, supposedly just to come because one was unable to attend. This is a large center. So, the thing is that it's, uh, I am happy about that because uh, this is a conference, it's a disciplinar, but this is more focused on education and how you to apply ICT in, uh, in, in that context. So let's see what we are going to talk about uh, today. So the, the purpose of always of this question is just to provide a forum or to discuss uh, challenges that are posed by the use of ICT in the classroom, especially in the teaching profession. So we are not focused on teaching and not, uh, not basically on the learning. So we are under a pedagogical perspective and not uh, and we try to do in these uh, gatherings uh, to offer answers to, for teachers to better make use of the ICT. That's the main important thing. So in which areas? Basically in the curriculum, how to organize the curriculum and the context according to the ICT. Also how to, that curriculum is affecting the students' learning, especially in teaching, especially with the strategies and, and uh, uh, pedagogical skills and also about the workplace relationship. Very quickly, so okay. So we have uh, ten presentations. I don't know whether it's uh, th th there are three of uh, main lines, uh, three main topics in the three, in the ten presentations. One of the lines is regarding online and e-learning um, teaching through the use of MOOC or through the use of uh, platforms like Moodle. Another one is talking about digital skills and competencies of the teachers. And the last one is uh, <coughs> it's about uh, using, uh, especially the, which is the, what is called uh, technical knowledge applied to the technology. So under these three main topics, all of the presentations are uh, kind of um, merged. So this is uh, supposedly the order we have in the program. But at the moment, so uh, there is a first presentation, but she's not uh, here at the moment, about the signature pedagogies using Moodle platform by one uh, under the Russian perspective. We have uh, the use of uh, Eritrean pre-service uh, teacher perception. So I think uh, this is uh, yours, right? Yes. So that is the same thing, so you will probably start the uh, yeah. uh, your mind. Then we have information, competences, <coughs> and education, Jorge, which is present here, so it will be the second. Uh, the another um, paper is vocational platform for children and teaching mathematics in Russia. So these people couldn't attend the conference, but I'm going just to do a make a short presentation. She asked me to do that. And then 
we have uh, two interesting papers about the use of MOOCs uh, through gamification and also the adaptive learning uh, based in, in artificial intelligence, right? And so we also have uh, the presenters there, which is Vida, uh, and uh, then we put this other four. So the thing is that the, the first slide, this belongs to the morning, so uh, before the coffee break, so the, the, the six, and this other four, one, two, three, and four, belong to the, to the afternoon. Actually, I would say that uh, probably if uh, this lady is coming uh, later, so we are going just to do five in the morning, uh, in, the, in the first leg, and another five in the second leg, so it's kind of very important. Well. This is for uh, after the <coughs> where, where, uh, where Pinat is going to uh, present something related to the question and uh, and Tahut. and then Rich, who is also present here, is going to talk about the uh, collaborative work with Wikis. And then we have got uh, Laura Sagrati, who is also here because of today, so she is going to come uh, anytime now, I guess or at least in the second leg of this uh, track. And then uh, these three two people, I haven't seen Catalina, who is the uh, contact person, but uh, she should be the, the, last, the last one, sorry about that. So according to this schedule, and according to these three main lines of, uh, of research that we have gathered together in this, uh, uh, in this track, so we will start with, uh, with the second paper by you, and then we just will continue with Jorge, then me, and then Lovira. Is that okay for all of you? Yes. So if you want just to take the floor, that's much appreciated. Uh, Uh, that uh, 
and then our research is very much moving uh, in between educational sciences and, and uh, computer science. And uh, actually the, the student who is working with this has a background in, uh, in educational sciences uh, and uh, the research as, uh, as, as carried out now could be easily located also in any educational sciences department. But he's, uh, he's uh, now with us in computer science and that uh, means that uh, we are in the second, later part of the research uh, agenda. Uh, we are also looking at the technological solutions and developing the, uh, the tools to, to kind of manage the potential gaps uh, in ICT utilization in the context. Um, so, um, in many edu uh, developing countries, uh, but also of course in, uh, in, uh, in Western societies in Europe and, and so on, there quite often is a gap between the educational needs of uh, the 21st century generation of, of teachers, uh, meaning that the meaning that uh, the the um, technology and the use of technology uh, at schools is developing so fast that the uh, teacher education programs necessarily can't cope uh, with the change and. Uh, this, uh, this, this gap is even more evident in, uh, in a developing country context where uh, the lack of basic technology, lack of basic infrastructure hinder uh, the development very much. And uh, the needs of the, of the teachers and the schools and the educational provisions of the teacher education programs quite often do not meet. Uh, so let's uh, let's see. Uh, traditionally, the teachers focused uh, in competencies in the subject matter. Of course, it's important still nowadays uh, uh, as a core of teacher profession. But uh, with the new learning environments, uh, also skills to manage the ICTs has become uh, more and more important. So there are more aspects uh, that. Uh, teacher education programs need to take into account. And um, we are following in this, in this research the framework of, of technological, pedagogical and content knowledge, which is known also as a TIFA framework, which is rather recognized and standard framework uh, for studying the ICT integration in uh, educational settings. So, um, traditionally, the content and the pedagogy have been in the form of the teacher's profession. Uh, so it know, it's known as pedagogical content knowledge. The teacher needs to have the pedagogical skills and the teacher needs to know the content of the subject matter. But nowadays the technology has added uh, the third component into the game and uh, this has became as uh, the technological, pedagogical and content knowledge deeper. So it means the skills that are needed, uh, the teachers need in order to efficiently integrate and use the ICTs in their teaching, taking into account the pedagogical aspects and the content uh, matters. And of course the context where we are dealing with uh, is, is, is always defining how the technologies are taken into account in the teaching process. And uh, as I mentioned, we are now dealing with the developing country context where the challenges are quite, quite uh, different to those, uh, for example, in Europe. Uh, lack of basic infrastructure, uh, lack of, in many cases, electricity, uh, absence of internet connection of any kind, for example, in Eritrean uh, uh, context. Uh, are the factors that, uh, that, that uh, influence what kind of technologies can be utilized uh, in, the IC, uh, in the schools. Uh, so we have utilized and taken this TMAC framework uh, as a reference because it's, uh, it's widely used and, and, and uh, we can quite easily compare uh, the findings and the developments uh, to, to other uh, research. So what we did, we, uh, we have um, <coughs> uh, formulated the research problem 
and uh, in this case it's that how and what are the teachers uh, proficiency uh, to effectively integrate the technology uh, in their teaching uh, uh, so that uh, the teaching uh, meets the educational needs of the learners. Uh, but as I said, in, the, in the developing countries like Eritrea, uh, there are uh, sort of, of uh, effective integration of, of appropriate technologies. There might be some technologies at school, but uh, as best they quite often are outdated, they are not working, and the teachers do not have necessarily the skills uh, to, uh, to utilize them effectively. And, uh, one of the very interesting findings, which I will talk more, more later, is that, that in many cases uh, the students are more capable to use the ICTs. And the students are quite often also in the return case, uh, they do have the access to smartphones, especially if they are a bit, a bit older. Uh, and then they are in many cases far more advanced users of ICTs than uh, the teachers are. And it seems that the teacher education programs in this context have not been able to, to uh, cope with that challenge. So, uh, the particular research questions that we were interested in this, this research was that what is the status of integration of technology, pedagogy uh, and content knowledge in teacher education and development programs in, in Eritrea? And what are the main challenges that hinder uh, the teachers' uh, capabilities to integrate the technology? Uh, in their uh, pedagogical and, and content notes. So in order to do that, uh, we, we made a quite large survey. We had almost 300 pre-service pre teachers uh, answering to the uh, surveys. Uh, they were from two colleges of, of teacher education, and uh, those two colleges are the only two educating teachers in, the, in Eritrea, so we, we got quite uh, representative sample uh, from the context. Uh, so we have a mixed methods uh, approach. Uh, we had a questionnaire um, to map uh, the, the attitudes and then also open ended kind of qualitative questions to get that deeper insights uh, to the answers. And we analyzed the quantitative uh, questions or the statements. Uh, and calculated uh, the descriptive statistics. You can see, uh, see more detailed statistics in the paper. Uh, I'm not going, uh, not, not going uh, through them here uh, in this presentation. And then this uh, qualitative question scale quite nice insights uh, uh, the numbers. So, uh, as of the basic ICT skills of the teacher trainees or research teachers, so majority of them reported uh, that they, they know how to use the basic ICTs. But uh, interestingly, which is actually quite phenomenal in, in many, many developing countries, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa, is that uh, the users, the, even, even these uh, research teachers who are about 18 to 20 years to 25 years old. Uh, so they, they feel more comfortable with uh, mobile technologies than with the traditional uh, computers, ICTs, as, 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 as we understand them here. Uh, and uh, this is obviously because many of these countries have kind of skipped one generation of technologies. They have moved from uh, situation without technology directly to the uh, era of mobile technologies, and that also is very visible here in these results. Uh, the attitudes, um, they do have positive attitudes towards use of ICT in education, but again, they are more con uh, confident with the smartphones or mobile technologies than, than uh, with the computers, which means that um, the traditional learning environments uh, necessarily do not work uh, very well in the context. Uh, but of course this is a very good indication uh, the good attitudes they have is that, uh, that uh, the ICT integration and acceptance of technology uh, is, is in good level and uh, it is possible to integrate uh, the technology efficiently in the context. 
the competencies in general, as I mentioned, they are in good level. Uh, but uh, there are what we found is that there are quite big uh, variation uh, based on the uh, reasons teachers back from whether they are coming from from uh, or they have been at school in areas uh, that are more well equipped in the in the bigger cities or whether they are coming from rural areas. And uh, they are positive uh, towards uh, the role of technology and, and the idea that technology actually could bring something uh, more into their teaching. But they also see quite demanding to in integrate the ICTs uh, and the teaching and learning. And this is probably partly because they feel that the, the institutional support is not in, uh, in, in uh, good, uh, good enough level. Uh, so that uh, they would be ready to adopt the ICTs in their teaching. Uh, and uh, again, uh, the use of smartphones and mobile technologies uh, <coughs> were much higher than, than the use of traditional ICTs. And, and as I said, this is quite typical pattern in many, many of these uh, developing countries. Um, and uh, they use the ICTs for different purposes as, as in, uh, in any uh, society nowadays. Uh, most popular use cases are kind of uh, out of school or non-educational activities, social media, communication and, and uh, entertainment. And of course these are the elements that uh, could be integrated also uh, into the uh, contemporary or smart learning environments that could be developed uh, uh, here. And as I said, uh, the research teachers feel that they get uh, little support uh, from, from the institutions uh, so that, that the institutions are not capable uh, to provide them uh, enough support when it comes to the ICT uh, integration. This clearly indicates that uh, the teacher education programs in Eritrea are uh, lacking behind uh, when it comes to integrating technology um, in teaching and learning. And uh, this is uh, obviously one, one of the aspects that we are trying to focus more and, and, and uh, develop later uh, the context to our uh, ICT tools, especially keeping in mind uh, the, the uh, teacher education. So, um, the teacher students were positive towards uh, using ICT. They are capable to use that. On the other hand, uh, they, they uh, indicated clear gaps uh, in, uh, in, in uh, institutional support uh, and it might also affect to their attitudes and, and, and ways how they teach. Uh, so, there's a clear, clear gap between uh, the educational needs and, and, and uh, the needs and the provision of, of, of the teacher education programs nowadays. As I said at the beginning, this wasn't any big surprise for us, but uh, these findings uh, from the surveys uh, uh, confirmed this, uh, this uh, idea. So, there's a clear need for the systematic process to integrate the ICTs in the teacher education and development programs. And through doing that, we hope that the uh, appropriate contextualized technologies and learning environments eventually find their ways also to the schools. Uh, so we see it very important to start to work from teacher education programs, not necessarily uh, right in the schools. Uh, because of course the research teachers are those who, who will be uh, using the technologies and, and uh, and, and we see that it's uh, very valuable to, to provide them with the good skills uh, on ICTs and, and, and good approaches and appropriate ways to use ICTs uh, before they are going uh, uh, to work in the field. <coughs> and uh, again, the TPAC framework provides us good benchmarks uh, uh, 
for the universal in international standards. And uh, we have to take into account the very specific uh, contextual uh, challenges that exist uh, in, not only in Eritrea but also in, in, in many other um, developing countries, for example, lack of internet connection uh, to start to. So there is a clear need to develop uh, these smart learning environments so that they necessarily do not rely uh, to cloud services or, or this kind of uh, uh, resources available uh, uh, for for the more uh, developed uh, schools, but we have to have to find the ways to efficiently produce content locally. Uh, but it also means that it will be then uh, contextually hopefully very relevant. Okay. Thank you. At least the situation is at the moment so. Okay. 
Thank you. Yeah. Just that yes. I just work uh, locally first and then just try uh, to stand to <laughs> yeah. another level. Thank you very much for your presentation. So the next presenter is uh, Jorge. I forgot the, your surname. Uh, Jorge Kimas.
we call the information literacy. We try to acquire valid and conscious knowledge through the search and retrieval of information in addition to the interpretation of the textual data from reading from new information, reflection and evaluation. However, the most of the research carried out has established the implement a self-perception researching scale on their own digital information competences. Our investigation tried to, to <coughs> measurement the real levels of the acquired discompetences of the students, not the auto-perception who the students have the, themselves. The, final, finally, the information literacy is a multi-dimensional concept and respond to a constant convergence of trends and definitions according to the school of self, innovation, development, technological sectors, and research areas. He is currently recognized as the very need for the development of multi-literacy multi for the 20th century. This is the most important. The competences in literacy is the most important is uh, one of the most important uh, competences in this century. And then, what's now our objective? We aim to this research was a diagnosis to the level of digital, digital information competences, particularly literacy competences of the school education student in order to propose an experiment design that verifies the effectiveness of training program for the development of informational competences in education of students for the entire school. What we do? We diagnose the level of competitions, we apply an intervention, educational intervention, and again we level the all the <coughs> levels of the competences we have several instruments to try to <coughs> see the proactive and advantage of the improve the student art in, in these several uh, thematics of competences. Well, uh, how we analyze of the style of the data. Well, this data analysis study based on research data in the student of the last primary cycle. The second, we try to an aquatic experimental test type design was used with use of pretest and post test uh, evaluations. It's in very important and uh, educational intervention was carried out to support models of innovation and integration of teaching and learning processes with a several ICT tools, particularly use internet how based of the uh, the general context of the competences, uh, educational competences. And uh, well, what happened with the sample uh, instruments and data analysis? We have a <coughs> sample of 328 students. 51% female, the 49 male, the age is 13 and 17 years, and the mean is uh, approximately 15 years of the, uh, the participant of students. And what happened with the instrument uh, analysis? The instrument applied in the protest and post test for the evaluation. The informa information competency is composed of 29 dichotomic students from 37 single and multiple choice questions. At a specific level, there are seven questions in information search dimension. We, we level four dimensions. The first, search dimensions with seven questions. Evaluation dimension with 10 questions, information processing, 5 questions, and communication and dissemination of informa information, 9 dimensions. In our 
and well. You can see how this uh, dimensional pretestant uh, post test and how we can do the uh, educational intervention. In first part, we uh, we talk about the general context about ICP. Right. Introduction, how they how we do 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 how we have realize a third ETC. The first dimension we have made is information search. Second, digital evolution of the digital information from the internet. The third, information processing. And last, communication and dissemination of the other variables, other dimensions. First, once we obtain the, the first data, an initial exploratory analysis of the distribution, distribution of the variables and the equality of the structure of the variances and covariances in the data analysis was performed. We tried to determine the normal distribution of the data because uh, the idea is to see is to how uh, analysis post uh, we can realize in in function of the data. In this way, parametric techniques like ANOVA with repeated measure was applied. Uh, Intersubject factors, pretest and post test, uh, intersubject factors could are incorporated. Age, type of school, gender, it is. Uh, well, other already other techniques that complement the results as are applied, such as the TTS to facilitate the some analysis. Uh, well, what is the results? First of all, the statistics descriptive. In the pretest, in the analysis, the results was not very good. The levels are low, but in the post-test after applied the intervention and education, we can find an increase of the final uh, scores. However, in the processing of information, sorry, in evaluation, we can find no difference. The final uh, scores are basically very similar. You can see in the non-parametric process, you can see that in every dimension, search, evaluate, processing and communication, we can find significant differences, but again, in evaluation, we not find significant differences. What happened in the contrast between sex variables? Women and men, female and male, no, they don't have a significant difference. Maybe the woman have a little level, better levels in these uh, dimensions. Evaluation, you can see again, is uh, the worst uh, dimension of the world. And you can see in this graph, in the line, in the segmented line, is the pretest, or the post test. And you can see the higher score respect to the line continuum, where you can find a lower levels. And particularly, you can find evaluation, you can find no significant difference. They start as finalists in the same level as the one other one. And the processing of the information they advance very more and final score about the initial uh, in the pretest. Finally conclusions. First, the first objective was validate a model of education about informational competences with ICT for the student of primary education. 
the model was used in the secondary and university context, but now with uh, this investigation, we we validated in a in primary context education. The student score for diagnosis for tests are divided into two levels, but particularly in relation to the confidential information communication to a technological environment. Once of once the digital intervention is applied, there are a different improvements that are significant in the nature of certain information and information processing to comprehend the informational competence. Uh, may I remind students of our personal significance, difference in setup and in the US. Thank you very much for your work.
song in this documentary? I think it's uh, necessary in a particularly in a different course, like a language or mathematical. I think it's uh, the best way to enter and work this uh, work this uh, part of the informational communication in the school. But in my country, it does not exist uh, in the curricula uh, this type of information, particularly way of the competence uh, data competence. So, as uh, I told you at the beginning, uh, this is our uh, third presenter, but unfortunately, uh, they couldn't come from all the way, you know, from Russia to here. So, this is the, uh, uh, the paper is about the uh, an analysis about the rational, uh, Russian sorry, educational platforms for children and how the, those platforms are used in math uh, in the primary education level. So I'm just going just to do uh, the presentation. I, I, I think that I'm going to last less than the 15 minutes. I, I said probably roughly 10 minutes I would be finished. And I also, it's, uh, if you have uh, any specific question about this uh, presentation, uh, you can just directly address to them by mail or something. And I can also report to them if you are interested in doing that. So, uh, basically what the, the Russian colleagues analyzed, so they were interested in the, how the platforms in education are used in primary education. Uh, remember in the field of mathematics. And so they started from this theoretical framework. So they think as all of us do, the basically uh, change uh, the ways uh, learning, uh, it's becoming uh, or it's just uh, is taking place in the, in the classroom and also that uh, it's needed some sort of renovated methods in education that uses uh, uh, the ICT just for the sake of the improvement of, uh, of the uh, learning of mm -hmm. the children but there is a problem so that it's uh, according to them that Nowadays, the pedagogical community in Russia is concerned about the, um, that there is a kind of uh, decrease in the quality of teacher training from the mathematics uh, teachers. Uh, so, they demand more, more or less more engaging educational experiences that should be provided for uh, not only for the mathematics uh, teachers but also uh, to the pupils. I do think that the, the the student teachers of mathematics, they should be using ICT by all means. So in a, in, in a way of renovate, you know, the other way of, uh, of teaching this uh, important and instrumental uh, domain of knowledge. So starting off from this framework, uh, the purpose of this study is to analyze the Russian language educational platform for by them successfully in teaching maths to primary education students. So this is the rough objective. And so that purpose can be break, uh, broken down into these two. So the, the, the research uh, objectives are to conduct a comparative analysis of uh, Russian language interactive platforms that are about the mathematical content. And also to identify the educational platform resources uh, to form something matter mathemat mathemat mathematical, math mathematical skills <laughs> in primary school. Okay. Uh, this is basically what this is what uh, the first presenter was talking about. This is what the technological knowledge, uh, which is merged with uh, subject content knowledge. Anyway, so this is basically really briefly the methodology they use. 
so they uh, uh, they include a questionnaire diagnosis method, uh, question and testing just to identify w those educational platforms, resources uh, that are talking about that they are just aiming at improving um, the teaching of mathematics in primary schools. And so the, the study was conducted in, uh, in Kazan, in Russia, and 144 school students for the third grade of the primary school education, so nine to ten years old, and six teachers took part in this research. They use comparative analysis, a qualitative, qualitative research method uh, of uh, five Russian language interactive platform uh, that uh, they have uh, um, contents about mathematics. So, um, in order to perform or to conduct that analysis, they use uh, these five criteria. So, first of all, the platform rating, how uh, the, the platform was rated by the user, they like it or not. Second, if uh, the convenience is the side interface platform for primary students to work. The third criteria is uh, provide uh, the, uh, the students of the primary schools a route for a kind of a personalized or uh, individual educational route. And uh, the fourth one is the possibility to choose independently the mode of, uh, or the, the type of method for the educational activities or assignments, and finally, which type of services, educational services, understood, I guess, as the resources that the platform uh, may offer to the users, uh, are present in, the, in, in, those, uh, in those platforms. So I have, uh, what they heard from, the, they basically explain it uh, uh, here, on the, um, so they, they conducted a, a kind of a really thorough qualitative analysis and uh, what they use is just to go into five platforms, so we've got the platforms here in these first columns, and they were just kind of uh, um, taking notes about the five criteria I just told you, one, two, uh, three, four, and five. So this is, as you know, this is a kind of a descriptive uh, assessment of, of your platform. So this is the number of users of each platform, and then this is the second criteria here, and so forth. So you can also see that this is basically, uh, I don't, uh, I'll let you just demand, but I'm just not going into this, but you can just get a grasp of what I'm saying. So this is five platforms, five criteria, with the same criteria they're analyzing the five of them, that are the most common or the most used amongst the, the teachers in primary school. So, let's go back to <laughs> this, uh, So according to that, they just uh, raised two conclusions, which were that uh, they basically amongst that five uh, platforms, the first one that they they analyzed that appears in that table one, that was the best for them. Uh, because of those two reasons, so the because basically the pedagogical potential of uh, using that RU, which is the most favorable favorable to use in the process of uh, primary education students training in math. So that should be probably the national best platform to just to teach uh, students mathematics in primary education. And then the interactive educational platform, uh, you see that RU, can be recommended also as an additional didactic material in primary school children in mathematics. So what they are saying is, okay, this is the best platform and you should be, this is the message for the faculty of education, you should be using that platform uh, to teach the novice, not novice, the uh, student teachers how to uh, teach uh, mathematics to the pupils. So this is basically, if you want, I can just browse the, the, the Russian uh, just for a second. This is the YouTube just, uh, just to have an idea, at least visually, because uh, YouTube, uh, yeah. So 
so uh, this is it basically. So you have to, uh, here there's some sort of uh, user account and a password. You can participate, and this is basically you know some of the uh, the things you can find you know in the in the website. So it's uh, it's very uh, I don't understand anymore in Russian, of course, in Russian, but it's uh, <coughs> that this is very user friendly. And this is kind of well adapted for primary school students because they use uh, avatars and logos and it's very colorful. So this is basically it. I, I don't know if you have uh, any questions for the question about this case. But in, in the case you want yes or you are interested in which the contests are about and if you want just to name it or to try to do something as the Russians do in this platform, you can directly address the the three main authors of this presentation. So uh, this is it. So the thing is, we can go to the fourth presenter and just uh, just wait. So this is uh, this is it for for this case. Thank you for paying attention. And now I'll give the floor to Elvira. Which, uh, she's going to be presenting a study about the uh, uh, use of gun information through uh, platforms like MOOC. So please do it, I don't know how to use it. Is it I don't know. Okay. 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 ¿Quieres que me quede por aquí? ¿Aquí o...? Pero, no lo decís, ¿no? No lo decís, ¿no? No lo decís, ¿no? Uh, 
by other hand, the positive aspects are a moot course help democratize education. Just because anyone who has an internet and computer can have access to quality education. And the MOOCs bring an opportunity to create and develop innovative pedagogical models. Okay? So, uh, the purpose of this research is describe how the strategy called gamification has been implemented and evaluated in education MOOC based on available literature. See, this point is very important because I think in the world there are many, many, many courses with gamification. But the focus of this research is about available literature. Okay? The idea is to set a theoretical precedent that presents the success and the failures of this strategy in the last six years. Okay? For this reason, uh, we use a systematic mapping review. Okay, uh, for this purpose, we define uh, three dimensions. The first one is discipline, refers to the elements of the gamification used in each investigation and how were used. Research uh, uh, has to do with show, shows how evaluate the gamification strategy in MOOC and what were the results from. And technology refers to how feasible it, it is to replicate the gamification model in other MOOCs. For this one, uh, we identify the, the technological platform where user and the type MOOC. And in the, in the same time, uh, we focus in if the gamification is embedded in the platform or, or it use an external application. Okay. And in the same time, for each uh, dimension, we establish uh, six uh, subordinate research questions in order to, to have a guide for uh, looking for information in each item. Okay. Uh, how, how do it? Okay. Uh, the first one, uh, in order to, to search uh, these items, we use two words, gamification and MOOC. But uh, in the same time, uh, we use other words, uh, for example, for gamification, uh, the alter alternative words were game-based learning, game, and enhance. Um, for MOOC, we use it, uh, open courses and online courses. Okay, so in this uh, graph we can see the data source and the, the, the number of the items that, that we found. In total we found uh, um, 495 papers in between uh, 2013 and, and 2018. So the criteria for exclusion were Papers about serious game, if not, because serious game and gamification are things are thing, different, different things. Mm -hmm. um, no empirical research, papers before uh, 2013, and not arbitrary papers. Okay? The, the sample, finally, the sample was composed of 22 students. <laughs> okay? I, I think it's the, the first. Uh, the first important result. Uh, in, in the last six years, just 22 students in, in comfortable uh, literacy. Okay. Well, in order to, to, um, uh, to analyze the information, the items were arranged in a matrix. Okay. Uh, uh, let me show you a uh, just here. <laughs> okay, uh, here you can see the reference and uh, the 
uh, aspect that we analyze. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if this this uh, uh, part is for each dimension. This dimension one, dimension two, dimension. Okay. Well, uh, about uh, some results uh, we can see. For example, um, in this graph we can see that Germany is is. Ha uh, uh, has the, the most items published in the serious uh, journal and um, the error is uh, uh, prevalent in who was higher education. Okay, let's go uh, to the analyze each, uh, the each dimension. Uh, for example, uh, by discipline, we can see uh, this is the item, uh, for example, in the, the dynamics, the, the most used is emotion and progression. In mechanics, challenge and reward. Uh, it's very common in MOOCs to uh, uh, see uh, these mechanics, no? Uh, because uh, when the student finish uh, a model, uh, it is recognized by uh, badge or, or, or prize, uh, whatever. Okay, it's, it's very common. Yeah, uh, about components, we can see badge is the, the most popular and points, uh, yes, badge and points. Okay, the mechanics of reward is very convenient in a gamified, gamified system with a MOOC environment. And since it can be factored than in us in extrinsic motivation because, because it gives recogni recognition to the participant for the achievement of something, for, for example, a challenge, an activity, an exam, or a contribution in a form, etc. Okay? On the other hand, the most used components are the badge, points, and little words. Perhaps because this type of component pairs well with the mechanism of challenge and reward as well as with emotional dynamics. Okay. Um, with respect to the research dimension, we can see that uh, three items not described uh, how uh, the gamification was, was evaluated. Uh, others, uh, the eight, eight uh, items, use questionnaires uh, or interviews. Uh, the most of, of them uh, use analytics of the course, and just one use control and experimental groups, and six of them use uh, like they, a course completion rate. Okay, I think in here, for me, <laughs> is the most interesting, interesting result of this year, research. Okay, more than 16% uh, of the items show a quantitative methodological approach. The most relevant results are, look, um, five uh, research found that course completion rates above 18%. Remember that the average is the 5% in the world. So I think this, this uh, result is very interesting because the, the terminal rate is high. Okay, um, even more, the MOOC of the item A12 obtained 91% competition rate. Okay, I, I think it's wow. Um, the MOOC of the item A22 had a completion rate of 13.5%, uh, uh, which is an interesting percent percentage among the ex MOOC type. Okay, because um, as you know in in the world of the MOOC, we have C MOOCs and X MOOCs. 
the Xbox uh, used to be a massive course. Uh, for this reason, uh, the rate drop is high. No, it's low. No, it's high. Sorry, it's high. Okay. Uh, more. Uh, in these items, found that participants were more active, satisfied, and motivated with gamification. In item A3, uh, found the batch and the girls motivate the participants to take more steps each week to take care of their care. In this item, we found mechanics of chance help to cognitive elements and because uh, this uh, mechanic uh, gives the opportunity for the student to learn from their mistake and try again. In this item, in A16, uh, found the uh, psychological connection in gamification is a strong motivator uh, since relationship with other health to participants to not give up. In, in these uh, items, A19 and A22, from the gender and the previous experience do not make difference regarding the use of the medication. Okay. And finally, in this dimension, technology dimension, we found the, the following. Okay. In this graph, you can see the type of platform and we can see the model is the, has a, the more frequency. I think it's normal because this platform is free. Okay? Uh, while uh, Coursera, uh, I think, is, is free, but the participant has to pay for the certificate. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, other uh, uh, result interesting is that um, Brazil, uh, Germany, Mexico, Spain, and France. Is, uh, have uh, their own platforms, okay? It, I think it's clear Brazil and Germany because the idiom, not the language. Okay, with respect to the type of MOOC, the 14 idioms are about X MOOC, okay? Uh, we found that out of the uh, 22 items, 18 use gamification resource embedded in the platform. And in the other use, uh, for example, Facebook, YouTube, or Quizlet. Mm -hmm. Okay, conclusion. The mechanics of challenge, reward, and chance, and component by components such as points, year birth, badge, finance, engagement, motivation, and meta metacognition of the participants in the MOOC. The mechanic of chance favors the cognitive element through self-reflection that invites to try again after missing the correct answer. Okay? It's necessary to generate research about the impact of this innovation on different educational aspects. In such a way, the gamification research can reach a maturity level. Okay, this result mostly reveals the gamification in MOOC increases the completion rate and the user were more active, satisfied, and motivated. And finally, MOOC still have areas of opportunity to incorporate gamification for masses and a creative way that also includes social dynamics. Okay? Um, that's all. Thank you.
to have uh, ease and the sweet stress is you again, but in this case uh, we can ask the uh, next presenter of the second leg of this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one time, one time. Ah, it's que yo soy el en el there is also so the first presenter, which is the uh, uh, bar one and uh, <laughs> and the drama. So uh, I just because you just missed the first part, so I just put it in the at the end of the of the afternoon, so before twelve. Is that okay? So if uh, you can do it now, can you wish? But if not, you will be going at the end of the presentation, just uh, after the number 10. So just close to, to 12 o'clock. <coughs> you prefer at the end? Or, okay. So in that case, uh, well, you could be next. Next? Me now? Okay. I have problems. Emerging strategies 
and active methodologies uh, such as flip classroom, uh, using gamification tools such as recommendable. Uh, uh, how do you present use Kahoot in class? Use and the new, new Kahoot. No? Kahoot is a game, is a game, is a platform uh, developed by Professor Eng of Eng Wang and the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. It's a game personnel or group was a response system uh, that transformed the class in the competition uh, between participants. I, I, I uh, stay in the classrooms and the first moment in the classroom the teachers using a phone use uh, one question for Kahoot and uh, I view uh, uh, a significant uh, interest, interest for the students because this competition is uh, animate but there are many problems in, uh, uh, in, in the students find the correct uh, answer. Well, I I like to make sense. <coughs> and the time is very 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 uh, happy, but. Uh, I, I speak about uh, learning, the importance, but it's not, no, don't have uh, time. The, method, the methodology, the, a methodology in Peru to approach of user and the user documental collections procedures, no participant observations, questionnaire and content analysis. The subject was based as based and the free classroom methodology in the surveys were created or I told question agent in the whole format with on concept or for response option. The activity uh, was wizard at the first digital resource and the design and the class intended the evaluate previous studios concepts through the visualization, the depth videos and the other materials offered in the virtual environment now created on course spot. With the objective, the evaluation, the perception, positions, preference, and satisfaction that the, of the students about the partial practical utility of Kahoot as an instrument of learning concepts. We the, 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 the developed a questionnaire with open and closed questions adapted. Uh, the, the, the student uh, uh, occurred uh, in the representative of the intervention of the national <laughs> uh, uh, behavior, the behavior of Paris the University of Madrid. Campus uh, Comenarela for Land during the academic year uh, now. Uh, the students were 35, 46% uh, men and uh, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, and the uh, observation in classroom and uh, the analysis the, 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 the response. Well, uh, the evaluation the, the method, uh, 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 the, the, this procedure analyzes several perceptions of authors along the collaboration and improvement, the structure and whole process become clearer and more uh, transparent oh, 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 uh, oh. uh, for for uh, the methodology me and the two teachers uh, using uh, discussions about this. 
divise la, la, le méthode. Uh, and develop the question based on the Nelly-Wittak scale. The students show value from one to five, the degree to which the two are happen then in the development of the subject according to the code. One, insufficient, two, little, three, neutral, four, good, five, excellent. The sessions uh, were the following. The answers show that eight students consider that they benefited from the use of the for learning and also for the improvement and the memorization uh, of concepts. Regarding the possibility that Kahoot have had used the style of study and card to be sub the subject, 53% uh, uh, and mark uh, with code 1, 2, and 3. Insufficient, little, and little, showing that in that aspect the tool is inefficient. The answers with code 4 and 5, good and excellent, were more frequently focused on related to their competitiveness, 34% and motivation, 31% in the class, and 31% the students consider, consider it that the Kahoot motiva motivated. Uh, the, classroom, the, the lesson uh, of the students, content before the class. Questions 6, 7, 8, and 9 were formulated for authors based on the need to better understand the health books. Uh, that why was. Uh, I uh, We create the, the questions for uh, profundizing the, the, the aspects and the opinions of the students. Well, the first graph, satisfaction in the assessment of the students with AHU. Uh, as well as show uh, that 80 students considered, ah, uh, well, I speak about this. Uh, in the graph, uh, we uh, establish uh, the relation and the satisfaction uh, in the, the more, more part of the students stay satisfied with Kahoot, but the more part don't have many hits. Percentage of hits and wrong launches in Kahoot for game. There are three uh, I, I stay during four months in class, and four months there are ten games for the students. Uh, another point of an analysis the index uh, of a random answers that uh, has been found in the age game where there was a question with four alternatives. In the graph, we can establish a comparison between percentage of cohort and the erroneous answer, uh, answers. Uh, in the, the first game, uh, there are an equilibrate, but for example, in the six, uh, five, three, five, six, and seven, uh, only uh, two, two students uh, uh, answer correct. <coughs> well, the students have many uh, efforts, but the satisfaction was at it's okay. Five minutes? Uh, well, uh, no hesitation was shown to do the Kahoot in relation uh, to low numbers, the correct answers. Since most students, so, uh, so, so 16% won't have under the two. However, the student who say, what, uh, he was successful in the sessions, does not recommend it was because according to him, this is no happy the memorizing uh, that the concept. The one student is a very, very good in Kahoot, but don't recommend Kahoot for, for, for memorization of concepts. It's a paradox. It's, it's a he for, for uh, answer for her, but 
don't recommend doing it for this. Uh, the most uh, of the part, more part is the attribute uh, the lower number of poverty actions to personal effects, uh, such as lack of prior study, security has not been correctly in a short period of time and like uh, of consideration only old old memory. Uh, the most part uh, of students has responsibility uh, for you you elbows. Don't the student don't have the time. Uh, it's very quickly the, the projection, the, the tahoo in the in the in the classroom. Final considerations. The opinion of students about the practical use of Kahu as an instrument for learning concepts was positive and uh, it presumed that there were also great contributions from the teachers who taught the class, since from those answering possible to advance and improve the practice. Despite the high number of student errors, the use of gamification in the classroom with the tool was considered a positive experience for the students. Also, it allowed them to increase participation and motivation in the class. In general, the use of Kahu was a positive Positively, in the same the classification of the motivation for participation is directly related to the game scale design and the which encourages students to read the game. The motivation is for patient learning is to learn more Thank you. 
Okay. Um, in there, actually, there are two ways to uh, approach uh, of learning analytics and education. The first one focuses on the performance of the student. Uh, for example, Alex. I don't know if you know this platform. This platform is an online tutoring and an assessment program which supplements math instruction. Okay? And by the other hand, or the other way, is related to adaptation in of the instructor's action, whose objective is to generate action necessary to adapt to the student's profile and thoroughly achieve an improvement in their learning. Okay? And this research is about the second one. Okay? Uh, um, like about graph, we have this work. Okay, uh, it is uh, important to uh, uh, to puntualize that my team research about the uh, adaptive learning growth in order uh, um, when professor use this algorithm for for improve the the performance of these students. Okay, but this is the background. In um, 2016, with the help of artificial intelligent algorithms based on random decision trees, an algorithm was developed for predicting the academic success of engineering students taking the course thesis one. Okay, uh, the algorithm, the the people who who develop this algorithm used in the first step a neighbor, neighbors neighbors and the second the random forest algorithm. Okay? And for in, in this uh, graph you can see uh, different moments uh, about the um, result of the of the forecast of the real uh, performance of the student. In the first one, uh, you can see uh, uh, just use uh, quizzes, okay? Uh, applicate quizzes, and this is the result. The, the dark line is the, the forecast, and the light blue is the real result, okay? In this second moment, uh, uh, quizzes plus homework, okay? And you can see how the real and the prediction the gap is is um, closed is closed no okay is closed yes and in the third moment is pieces homework uh, plus instruction evaluation from stories and this is the result and the the fourth pieces homework survey and um, geometrics that like uh, photographs, um, uh, say uh, the mm, no, oh, the facial connection, yes, uh, like a photograph. But the other one, the the the, the reading card, what do you say? One, see? <laughs> okay. Uh -huh, yes. And uh, the the wave, the neuro, neuronal wave, no? Neuronal wave. Okay. Well, uh, okay. This is the 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 close uh, result. Uh, this is the, the final result in this year. Uh, this is the the uh, result uh, of each student real and uh, predicted and real. Okay, in, in this graph you can see birds. Okay, the the gap or the distance between the forecast and the real is too close. Okay, this is the March. This? The March. Yes, exactly. Exams March was from zero to one hundred. Yes, the predictive and the real. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this is the background. So the next step was how the professor use this as 
a tool in order to help the students. Okay? What kind of, of uh, adaptive learning group was used in order to help the students? Okay, so the research of objective was identify adaptive learning groups created by the, the instructor, instructor based on the predictive algorithm. What, what is the methodology? Okay, we use a mixed method approach. Uh, we work with three professors of physics in engineer area, six groups, three control groups and three experimental. I mean in the three group experimental uh, the professor using the algorithm and the adaptive group in base of the result of the project. Okay? In the control no. uh, well in, uh, the first the algorithm was trained with okay this is a very for me a very funny because algorithm was training, yes, the algorithm ha has to understand what, uh, what way it has to, to take. So the training it was the grace and lock of each instructor of the previous course. Okay? Uh, okay, this uh, uh, research was in the beginning of the course. Okay? So the algorithm uh, has to be trained. For this reason, the grace and the love of each instructor of the previous course and the photograph of, of these students. Okay? Two minutes? Oh no, my God. <laughs> okay. Data collection instruments and techniques. Okay? Uh, we use a lot of the predictive results, semi structural interview, and you can see Paco, Paco, you give me more time. <laughs> this is uh, one of the professors. And, and finally, we apply questionnaire with a uh, liter scan for the student. Okay? Okay, okay. I'm, I'm going to test it. Okay. This is the result because this is a, a very nice one for me. <laughs> okay, look. This is a, a one of the three professors. This is the, the first forecast. In this, we use just the photograph of this student. Just the photograph. And look. And the uh, blue is the forecast, and the orange is the, uh, the real. Okay? If you can see, the, the distance between the real and the forecast is too close. And then in the second moment, in the second evaluation, uh, for this professor, uh, was very good photograph and the, the uh, race of the first period. Okay? Like, how do you say it? Like, 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 the tendency is similar, okay? And I think it, this is very interesting. Okay, look at the second professor. Okay, this professor is, is very um, um, disciplined, mm -hmm. very uh, focused with his students. So, look, in the first evaluation, uh, just photograph, look the, the tendency, the gap, in the second moment, uh, for this professor, it uh, was very photograph and the, the grade of the last period. This is the third, <laughs> look, the third. In the first, in the first moment, just photograph. In the second moment, photograph and the, and the grade. And look, this is other result interesting because this uh, algorithm, uh, mm, um, is to to say the the um, develop no the develop no the performance of the professor okay if, if you can see in here is homogeneous mm -hmm. 
homogeneous but in here no okay this is a, 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 a inesperate result of this research okay well, well this is a, a tool for validate the algorithm okay uh, this is the, the blue uh, bar is a um, a forest class of reference in order to compare both. Okay, well, um, uh, after the apply the forest class, we interview the instructor in order to know what to do with his with their students. Uh, for example, the the first uh, instructor used videos, tutorials of food, video exercise, la la la. And the second collaborative work, tutoring the discussion, and the third one, just tutoring, practice tests, and setting change. Okay. And then we ask, will you use the predictive algorithm as a tool in your teaching practice? The third one says yes. The second says no. And the third says yes. This it was a surprise because for me, this <laughs> the very professor. And if he said no. <laughs> okay. Well, if you want, I I'll finish I, here. Okay. I, if you don't mind, I, I think it's uh, what, what can I say? I okay. think it's a very interesting story. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Bit. Do you have any question? If uh, and if so, it's uh, it could be really nice for him and for us too. If you can just approach us after the. Mm -hmm. Is, uh, because we don't have time, we have four more presenters and we okay, have no four minutes. No problem. No problem. No problem. Okay. So uh, now um, we have, uh, I don't know if uh, Giovanni and Maunta is here. Or Giovanni? Okay, that's interesting because we have a... Okay, maybe anyway, we have a representation left and we have a 40 minutes, so we are roughly... So now it's the time for Laura Sara. Please, Betty. She's going to present the um, uh, Laura. Okay. Uh, uh, present the So uh, she's going to present uh, a paper uh, entitled. Uh, let's see if it works. Yeah. 
do you manage full time just for you are going to have more than this? Maybe we can how you are ready. So anyhow we have uh, three presenters left. Uh, Laura, uh, Catalina and Svetlana. So this is the three and we have um, roughly 30 minutes. So we are going just straight. Ten minutes each, more or less. And uh, it's not we, we can have just ten minutes or twelve minutes each and that would be okay. about Bari because my university, original university is Bari, but I'm uh, now uh, uh, associate professor and coordinator of the uh, university courses uh, in education in Benevento. I'm uh, uh, associate professor in didactic, general didactic, and in uh, teaching, in uh, teaching with uh, uh, technology. Study on the uh, competence of the teachers that use the uh, disciplinary content in order to disciplinate, in order to uh, transform, reshape the knowledge <coughs> of the disciplines in other forms, in, a, in the forms of digital. Our look and question. Uh, is about the digital edu, the framework, uh, European framework of the teachers and the educator, not only teachers but also the educators. Uh, <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember? And uh, specifically uh, the uh, uh, skills about the teaching time resources, the teaching and learning, and the empowering learners. Empowering learners. So we have to understand the new component, the new component. The possibility to te about the teachers to enhance the participation of students <coughs> into the environment of learning with the teacher, uh, with the technology, with the um, medium of technology. And uh, now I and my two professors, uh, uh, Professor Essa Perla, uh, we are thinking about a new construct, the construct of DGT, digitizing disciplinary content, a process in which the, the uh, teachers and students, not only the teachers but also the students, uh, reshape uh, the knowledge of uh, disciplines uh, in uh, digitalizing uh, new uh, forms, new, new shape. Now, this is the framework, total framework of a digital edu. But our, uh, we have to, specific, uh, to focus on selecting uh, the digital resources uh, to create and modify the digital resources to teach uh, the, uh, the, the, the possibility to, uh, for teachers uh, to uh, um, choose and uh, adapt the uh, content, uh, the medium uh, in order to enhance the learnings of the students uh, and the, the differentiation and the personalization. This is a specific uh, new uh, um, skills uh, um, asked to the uh, teachers uh, in order to empower the process, uh, not only the process of the uh, learning of students, but also to make them happy, to, to make uh, the students happy to be moved in the uh, environment uh, of, uh, with other students, with uh, other adults, uh, and so on, with the family. 
So this is specific the uh, really uh, um, uh, uh, this is the uh, specific uh, um, uh, understanding about the what 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 can we consider the selecting digital resources, creating and modifying digital resources, the teaching. See, the font of this, the font of this uh, um, uh, text is the uh, DigiComp Edu framework. And the other is the differentiation and personalization. What is differentiation and personalization? They use a digital technology to address learners' diverse learning needs by allowing learners to advance at different levels and speeds and to follow individual learning pathway and objective. So, in this specific uh, uh, skills, we find a new consideration of technology. The technology isn't uh, our object, it's the mean, the medium, is the uh, the means, the tools used by students, by teachers in order to enhance the learnings of students. Because the aim is to enhance the learnings of students, not the use of teacher, not the use of technology. And uh, we know the HT student study, HT uh, says that uh, the technology is a uh, important but not so central. The specific characteristic of the learning uh, environment is the quality of teacher, not the tools of teacher, or not the tools of technology, but uh, the, the way in which the teachers use the technology in order to enhance the learning of students. But uh, uh, in uh, in other country, in uh, USA, we have uh, another uh, uh, describes of uh, the uh, teacher essential digital literacy. We have to, in fact, integrate, create, and communicate. This is a specific uh, and uh, other component of how the teachers can uh, can use to um, modify not only the. Uh, not only the knowledge, not only the technology, in order to enhance the students' learning. So, we have to uh, focus on specific skills about the teachers. The selective integration, the creation, and the communication. We have uh, considered this uh, new uh, uh, um, units of analysis in our, and this is the first study on it. The content, the subject matter of, uh, for example, chemistry, literature, and the science, and so on. The disciplinary content, the common knowledge on a specific subject and the digitizing, excuse me, the digi uh, disciplinary content. The content specific knowledge, structuring and demands. That is reshaped because a teacher used a specific technology. So, this is just an example. The water, made a stable matter as the the knowledge about the physical content, or the, we have the phase diagram, is a specific disciplinary uh, element aspect, aspect of this content, and uh, this is a tool, some, a, a technological tool in order to uh, enhance the learning of students. So, what we teach is the content, how to teach the pedagogy, and the, with what to teach is the mediation, not only the technology. Technology is a specific aspect of the mediation, is a, a great process. How about investigation? How does teachers create digital disciplinary content to make it useful for students' learning, specifically? What is the object? Do the reshape digital content 
Now, we have an in-depth case study with a multiple analysis, qualitative and quantitative. The data analysis is about the triangulation of the document analysis on interactive PowerPoint for students with dyslexia. This is a specific case. case. And there's a transcription of in-depth interviews on the procedures of the same, uh, the, the same teachers. The context, the sample for teachers of the technological laboratory, the object. We have this content, the millimeter measurement. This is the disciplinary content, the uh, specific uh, um, representation of the content of the disciplines of uh, um, textbook used by the teachers. And this is a new tools. This is the digital ad adaptation provided by teachers to enhance students' learnings. Now, the first adaptation is about uh, the concept of caliber. The teachers used to modify the uh, meanings of the content, not only the mediation, not only the, 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 the communication on that, but, but the knowledge about the content. <coughs> The second uh, adaptation is uh, from the specifically uh, graphic, uh, graphical uh, communicational level about uh, the, uh, the, um, the use of specific uh, image, the use of specific text, the, the use of uh, this specific uh, uh, circular diagram in order to better understand the uh, the process. And another third adaptation is uh, the use of text and image in order to enhance the learnings of dyslexia with, with students with the dyslexia. <coughs> so, this is the semantic analysis of the transcription of the, student, of the teachers. The results. The teacher respected essential context. But they use a personalized way to understand the content. The teacher starts from students' previous experience of students. The teacher prefer realistic image, and the teachers are not familiar with the tri uh, tricks of this lecture uh, texts. So, in order to uh, improve the uh, competence of the teachers, <coughs> we had to uh, deep, deep understand the third part of the component, not only the communicate, not only the uh, specific content, not only the technological content, but how it's possible to adapt the, the content and the technology in order to understand the specific uh, needs of students. This is the third part of the, com of the uh, content. So we have to add some specific uh, aspect, uh, for example, into the pedagogical content knowledge, where's the aspect of the um, needs of students? In the pedagogy area of the TEACK? Uh, I, I don't know. We have to discuss on uh, it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. 
Good morning. Uh, we are going to, to start the class uh, with Lea. And uh, the first uh, paper is uh, from uh, capturing high level requirements of information that's what I'm calling so meta modeling. And among dashboard are in 